I want us to now go. How do we behold God? How do we behold God? Okay. How do we behold God? Let's go quickly to Second Corinthians, and I round up with that. Second Corinthians, chapter three. Verse. Let's start from verse 12. 2 Corinthians 3 from verse 12. I read, it said, Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech, unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the children of God could not look what? Steadily. So the children of Israel, the people that were like saying, I just want the law. Give me the law. I'm not interested. You know, just tell me what I need to do to get this God to work like a mission for me. <laughs> Faith does not work like that. So Moses obviously had gone. He received the command, you know, the commandments, everything. He came to them. For if even, you know, so what is telling us this, that if they had told God, God, yeah, God, speak with us, their face would have shined also. Like Moses. But Moses now became the mediator. He went, okay, God, what do you want me to tell them? But for that to happen, he had to interact with God. And then he then came to them. Let's read further. They say, unlike Moses who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. But their minds were what? Blinded. For until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament. Because the veil is taken away in what? In Christ. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. Are you hearing me? Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, in other words, when one says that, I God, I want to actually interact with you now. I, do, I, don't want, I don't want a middleman like Moses. That is why Moses says, says, I wish that all of you were prophets. But the, these people, they didn't care. Like they said, Moses, just tell us. God actually wanted to have a direct one-to-one relationship with every child of Israel. But they were like, God, <laughs> just tell me what I need to do. And we can see it didn't work. Right? It did not work for them. It will not even work till tomorrow. He said, now the Lord is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty. That is, freedom is not just, you know, freedom is actually the ability to do what God wants you to do. But that will not come until you kind of say, God, I really want to interact with you. I don't want the do's and don'ts at this stage. Because I strongly believe the do's and don'ts come from your relationship with God. Are you with me? You can, be, you can stick to the do's and don'ts, but it doesn't mean you have a heart for God. The Pharisees did not have. Are you with me? If you heard me say amen. He said, but we all, 18, that's what I'm going to, with unveiled face, open face, beholding, as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are be- being transformed. So the end of what God was telling them was not just to give them information of what they should do, but to transform them. That is why you can hear the word, and the word does not generate transformation because it's not from the place of interacting with an open face with God. Or you just want to say, give me the information. Okay, God said this. Okay, don't do this, do that. And you find that there is a struggle. I I want to, I know this, I'm not supposed, but I'm doing it because it's just information. It wasn't transformation. Are you with me? He said, you know, as we behold, as in the mirror of the glory, we are being transformed into the same what? Image. The same thing that God is showing us. The same thing that God is telling us, he said, from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so this morning, I close with telling us that let's all return to the place of beholding him. 
Beholding God is as simple as taking your eyes off yourself, off your abilities, off what you think are your strengths, off what oh, I can do that. I can just, and just say, God, this is me. Help me. Help me to reflect you as you want me to reflect you. Because sometimes we think that, I think I'm a good Christian. I, I pray, and I study my word, and I fast, and I give tithe. And we could just be like that Pharisee that was praying pr- proudly in the temple. The Bible says he went away condemned. You finish praying and heaven says you are condemned. <laughs> it's better not to be afraid. So men are judged in the place of prayer. You are either justified or you are condemned. And so this morning, I want us to go back. If our faith would grow and become stronger and become where, you know, you know, where God needs us, you know, to be, we have to keep looking at him. You have to take out time. Don't just, don't just say, God, give me, a, you know, a to-do list. Let me just do what you want me to do. And you're not interested in him. Your faith will not work because he is the substance of your faith. So you have to be more interested in knowing him, in looking at him, in understanding him. And that will take time. So create that time and the Lord will help us.